says, trying to work out if it's possible to do something like this for Microsoft Forms. The initial form is completed, which then triggers two other forms located in OneDrive to be emailed to the email addresses provided on the initial form. Looking uh, on Power Automate, there isn't much integration with forms. It's interesting. So I think what I heard was I fill out a form and then I'm sent other forms. I don't know if everyone agrees with me, but if that's the case, first thing that comes to mind is have, does branching work within the form? Thank so you, I, I, <laughs> Go ahead. I had that thought too, but it sounds like somebody's filling out the form and putting an email address in, and then a different form is sent to that email address. Uh, okay, I understand. So that's it's like I a, so if I, it's a, if I it's a fill out process. a form, and it could yeah. be multiples, but if I fill out the form and I add Norm and Joy, your emails yeah. as part of the form, and then it mm -hmm. sends those out to you. Yeah. So, right. so why not just add them as attachments to the form to begin with? This is why I'm like, why? Why? Is I mean, not yet can't. Known. Why does it need to trigger anything? Um, you can simply add a link, make it anonymous to those items that you're storing in your OneDrive, and put the links in the Microsoft form from the beginning. And then when they fill out the form, you can have, to your point, branching if, if you want them to do that, or you could simply fill out the form and have those links be at the bottom of your form and say, please fill out this form and click on these links. Yeah. And they could download those or they could fill them out as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest thing then is, well, I want to send them back. Well, that is an option that you have in forms is that once they fill out those things, you can give them instructions or you when they submit the form, you can actually have them attach it back to that form. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that, depending on what you're trying to ha happen. But I wouldn't have it trigger anything. I would essentially present mm -hmm. them with the things they need to do have them do it all in one action and then have them submit it and make it do what I want it to do after the fact. Right. Unless you're sending it to someone that's not part of that initial form process. Fair. I'm filling this out and then I need this to go to Bob. Right. You could have the link there and say, if there's anyone you know, please send it. But then there's no paper trail or audit trail back to what went to who, when. Yep. In, in which case, Ever. Power Automate can do that. That's, yep. that's yes. So, right tool, right job. How many times do we say that? <laughs> so in my mind, I'm thinking it's like maybe as a, a scenario, a, a travel representative inside the organization, Christian's going on a conference, okay? I submit Christian's name with his email. It's gonna send him the right form, so to speak, to, uh, to fill out from OneDrive. So like we said, Power Automate is great because there is actually, a some decent integration with Power Automate into Forms. So one of the triggers that you can use is when there's a new response. So the initial form where we're submitting Christian's name for the travel, that in turn can get all of those response details. And then you can start filling out those sub actions that will fulfill the rest of the business process. So yeah, you can totally do it. I, it you can, one of your triggers in Power Automate is when a form is submitted, send an email. And yeah. you can have that standardized email with the links in it. So I don't, I'm not yep. sure why that's a, you know, it, yeah. unless there's an if then, you know, if, if they've said in this response in the form, send them this one. If they've said in the yeah. response, in this one sends them something else. I'm not sure. About well, it. I think it's funny. It says there's not much integration with forms. Well, no, there's not much integration with a form. Oh. There's an integration with action. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When a form is submitted. Yeah. yeah, when a form is submitted, and, or if you really want to track the information, you can also have that form, put your information into a SharePoint list, and then have an action be anytime there's a new item created in the yeah. list, then you have an action that goes on to that. If you're concerned that maybe when people fill out the form, it doesn't do what you want it to do there, you can actually put something in between. So you're catching the data, you're doing taking action on it kind of at a little bit more fancy, more advanced mm -hmm. level. There's mm -hmm. There's additional steps you can add in the middle. And there's 100%. that additional paper trail you were looking for, Joy. Mm -hmm. you know? And you could, yeah. even if they want to keep it in the Excel spreadsheet, right? Have Power Automate bust open that field wherever it is. If there's an email address, go send whatever to whoever. Yeah. So Forms is great because it's approachable. Anyone can just start building. But there, yeah. there's there's some kind of gotchas with it. You were 
you know, Joy, Sharon, you were talking about audit trail. A lot of people don't realize that the responses to forms are being stored in your OneDrive by default, mm -hmm. right? So you create your own form, those responses are contained in your OneDrive as a container. That may not be such a bad thing, but if it becomes like a business critical or business important form, having it just in your OneDrive might be problematic. So you might want to consider moving to SharePoint and having those responses moved over. And I believe should be rolling out soon on the, the Microsoft 365 roadmap that that forms to list integration is going to be a default offering. So that that's exciting for, for those people there. Yeah, for multi-select, yes, please. Yeah. Instead of going to break it apart and put it back together there. So your point, though, Norm, is that um, you should move it to SharePoint. But if you create the form from Teams or a SharePoint site, it automatically assigns it to the group. It doesn't create it in your personal. So like yeah, if you're in, in Teams context. and you go from the new tab and add a form, it automatically yeah. assigns it to the group. A lot of people don't yeah. know that. That's right. So it's it's the point of creation where the storage is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's that's with a lot of things that we're seeing now inside of the service. Like a Microsoft list could be in your OneDrive now if you're using the list experience. Within the site, it's in the site. Teams, it's in the team. So it's a bit of a departure. You you kind of brought up a, a thought here. Um, uh, it's not about Melbourne, um, but uh, <laughs> a, a thought about um, uh, so. You know, one one of the, the historically one of the problems is like you create a solution and it's stored in my OneDrive. It's like, well, that's not corporate, it's not scalable for that. If I'm hit by the bus and gone, are they going to go and look at that? I mean, is that really a limitation of using forms versus Power Automate? Because if we're if it's being stored within my company OneDrive. You know, the company still then has recourse there. There's yeah. a way of backing mm -hmm. access to that. Right. So I, it's not really a scalability issue, but I think it's the the there's probably a scale like your the organization's dependence on it or the the criticality of whatever that solution is, whether it is in your OneDrive versus in a, a central available supportable area like SharePoint or Teams. Yeah. But you know the the lunch the lunch planner form who cares it can live in my OneDrive it can live and die in my right. OneDrive I don't care <laughs> but the thing that does that travel request for the organization I don't want that in my OneDrive I want that yeah. in a site where there's continuity should I go on vacation or right. leave the company this is a great example of and I know we all uh, talk a lot about governance of when you look at governance of solutions that are being created architected within your uh, your organization to have those conversations to say, is this something that again needs to scale up that needs to be enterprise scalable, or is this a spot solution for this team, for this handful of users, not a problem the way that it's built and developed. You, you're not going to know you to, to ask those questions if you're not having those conversations. So governance is not just about automating, having policies and things and, that are happening in the background. Um, mm -hmm. which are all necessary um, you, to, to have that level of automation. That's why provisioning is so key and, uh, you know, to, to put the guardrails in place. But you also then have to be having the conversations about stuff like this. People are going to go create. People aren't going to stop building things and solving their own problems. They need to get work done so they will move forward with or without IT's permission. Sorry, IT. Uh, <laughs> but then there should be a conversation review of those things, and sometimes – Something that was built says, hey, you know, there's a, just a better way or that is that's fine the way that it is in that scope. Um, we've got it documented. And if somebody then comes and says, hey, we should have this in, across every team and organization. Nope, we need to go and re-architect that. Mm -hmm. Well said. Go team, go.